Welcome to our psalm of day as we uh, look again at Psalm 144 at the second part of this particular psalm, specifically from verses uh, 9 through to the end. And I want to begin by asking you a question that hopefully you can just uh, pause the video for and just reflect upon for a moment. And that is, what do you think it means to be blessed by God? If God was to bless you, what would be the result in your life which would demonstrate that? Let me pause the video just for a moment. Just ponder that question for 10, 15 seconds. What would it look like in your life for God to bless you? As we come to this uh, uh, section of the Psalms that talks about the uh, blessing, I just reflected on that from uh, verse 15. The end of this particular psalm says, Blessed is the people of whom this is true, which is going to be what he just said previously in the uh, previous six verses specifically. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. So what characterizes a life that is blessed by God? In the psalm itself, David is reflecting upon the deliverance that God has given him by demonstrating his prayers were actually answered. And so God had made David the king, but there was a big time lag between when he was anointed king and when the kingship was actually in his hot little hands. And it came about through God delivering him from two enemies. The first was the sad reality of his uh, former king uh, Saul, and the second was the enemies of Saul who killed him also uh, did not have the ability to defeat him. Uh, David in warfare. So David was delivered from both Saul and the enemies of Israel, uh, the foreigners, Philistines, who were trying to attack Israel. So David knew firsthand that he was blessed because he was delivered. Now we can know that too. But in the New Testament, true deliverance comes through Jesus Christ. The only deliverance that you really need is a deliverance from the judgment of sin caused by your sin against our Heavenly Father. Now David knew at first hand this reality, and so that is the bedrock of his own faith, that he needs to be delivered from his sinfulness to God. Against you, Father, against you, God, have I sinned, only you, in Psalm 51. He knows that the core of his faith is a deliverance from sin that is truly what it means to be in the presence of God. That's the first blessing. Blessing is a deliverance from sin, a deliverance from the very thing that holds you back from being rescued from God, and that is your sinfulness, your pride, your judgment that you'll hold on to yourself. And only in Jesus Christ can that truly be redeemed. The psalm then goes on to speak about a couple of beautiful things that the psalmist always reflects upon in the Old Testament as being hallmarks of God's blessing upon a community. Let me read a couple of verses and hopefully you'll see them and then we'll look at what New Testament application and then our own lives application we can derive. So verses 9 talks about this singing that David's going to do because of his deliverance from God. Into verse 10 he's been delivered from his enemies and from the kings who are trying to, to kill him. Now verse 12 goes on to say, Then our sons, this is a, now a consequence, then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns will be filled. So now he's talking about a society that is the result of the blessing of God. And it is a society aimed at obeying God, a society aimed at removing idolatry, a society whose blessing comes because they start to fulfill in their behavior because of their heart change through that initial deliverance from sin their desire to obey God to listen to him to fulfill his character and to live it out day by day and the result of that is youths grow up in other words families and society grows up to be a society that is blessed by God because they obey God they fulfill the Old Testament blessing and don't fulfill hopefully the curses for example, from the end of Deuteronomy. Verse 13, our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. The consequence for Israel of obedience was God's care. And so God demonstrated that care by the uh, fruits of the forest and the fields and the orchards uh, flourishing, the animals uh, having great uh, times of producing milk, producing uh, carbs, 
producing a type of agricultural society that is a demonstration of a thriving one through great rainfall, through great provision. And Israel saw this as a blessing from God. So what are we to do as saying, we are blessed people? Well, our movement is still the same. Deliverance from sin rather than the curse of judgment. Now, if we obey our Heavenly Father, we should expect our lives to go well. But then you might look and say, but they don't. So what's going on here? It's because there is a shift in the New Testament to what it means for our life to go well. Our life going well is, in the New Testament, based upon our relationship to Jesus Christ and our desire to live that missional statement of wanting others to come into the faith and obedient to that faith ourselves. That's what it means to be blessed, to know our God personally. Now, mostly, our lives can turn out well. Our families can be raised in the Lord, and they themselves have that obedient, loving life, like the youths do in verse 12. That can happen. And quite often, like in verse 13, your barns can be full. But the reason your barns are full is not to be self-indulgent, but to use those resources that God has given you in order to help live the mission out as an obedient Christian. That is, you are generous to the poor, you are rich in blessings to those who are also wanting to help the gospel thrive in your community, in your world. So the purpose of the blessing is in order to help God's community thrive, because that's what it truly means to live out the blessed life. An obedient Christian raises their family like they've been raised by God. An obedient Christian uses the resources God has given them for God. The result of that is in God's hands. In some parts of the world, it could lead to persecution and death, and you are blessed because of that. But in other parts of the world, it could lead to the thriving of a community under God. It could lead to a revival of God's people. The results of that are in God's hands. The blessing to the person is in God's hands too. And it comes in initially, as we've hopefully seen, deliverance from sin, first and foremost, Deliverance into obedience of God's word, leading to communities of obedient people under God. And thirdly, the resources that God has given you in order to help those communities thrive and new people be evangelized and come into it. Why don't you pause now and pray for those three, three things. Deliverance from sin, the raising of obedient Christians, and the using of your resources for the kingdom.